right. Is it rolling? Yep, it should be live right now. We're live? Oh, We're live. I'm oh, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> it started. Yeah. What's up guys, this is the Chopaholics live stream. Um, we are sponsored by Cheater Slick Culture, uh, Speed and Culture Magazine, Benchmark Abrasives, and Rod and Style TV. Uh, I'm Zach with Wired Customs. You can find me on YouTube, uh, Wired Customs, Facebook Wired Customs, and on Instagram, I am wiredcustoms.va. Hey everybody, I'm Dan from Greasy Boy Customs. Same here, you can find me on every social media platform as well as YouTube, Greasy Boy Customs with a K. Wait. AJ and Kent, Kent. Kent's Customs. Um, you find us on social media, just Google Kent's Customs, it'll pop up uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, the shop page is Kent's Customs. Um, just check us out. Yep. And uh, together we're the Chopaholics, but we're three individual shops getting together for entertainment and education. So the eight pillars are the easiest part of the chop, right? What you want to do is go on the straightest part of the A pillar. We're going to cut three and a half inches out. So what AJ did was cut a three and a half inch Manila folder. It's perfect and true to three and a half inch. And we find the straightest area, and we can wrap this around and use this as a template. So every time we mark something else, template, template, same template. Pretty simple. Now the only thing you need to worry about is after you get it in the straightest area on the A pillar, you're just going to match it on the other side. So once you got it where we liked it. We measured it all out and just mirrored it on the other side. A lot of these measurements and cuts are superficial. What's important is that everything matches when it comes down. It'll all just come down evenly. So pretty straightforward. So moving back to the B pillar, you can see we have the lines run out up here. Now we're going to be doing the section we're taking out. It's right here at this hinge. Now if you can look and see, it's got three hinges. We don't need to keep three hinges though. It's a little bit of overkill, especially once we chop it, and ultimately, it is right in the way. So, this one's getting the kibosh, it's coming off. We're gonna do the cut here, and these hinges are gonna stay in place where they are. Throughout the chop, we may be tacking the doors loose or taking the hinges loose to keep the integrity intact. We'll use a tack if we need to, but taking this hinge out is not gonna affect any of the operation of the door at all. Yeah, the way you normally cut the window, you lose a whole lot of this window right here. So we're taking an inch out of right here, four, so we won't lose so much of the window, so we won't be taking the whole three out of this window, so we won't have such a small, strange looking window there. We want to take a little inch out of there, and he'll explain what we're going to do around the side. When you see these tape, tape lines here, this is just a, a line to go by, it's a three inch, we, we're going to try to take three inch, we're probably going to end up taking a little more anyway, but when you see this right here, cut like this. A lot of people don't do this. A lot of people would have just went straight wound, wound and took it out. But I like to leave the integrity of the lines. I like to leave my lines. So what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll cut this out. And the same with this right here, we'll cut this out. So we'll have all this meat to work with when we put this back together. Because this line, as you see, this is a tapered line. This is not so much a tapered line, but this is a tapered line. Then if I got four or five inches here to work with, I can work with that easier than I can work with just a little three inch band coming in that way. We've got, and we've done the same thing on the reverse side. And you see all the true, all the rulers stuck to it. These are trulers. They are uh, life savers when you're uh, chopping a top or you're doing anything, anything you need to lay out. These are magnet. This is a, like a little magnet on each end. Uh, they really help a lot. We really like that a lot. So we're gonna try to uh, try to make this more pleasing to the eye.
Big bad black! Big thing. <laughs> Someone said body and paint in 15. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> About that. Everybody's going to paint one quarter of the car. <laughs> what comes out the best. Sweet. So this is going to be a short recap on the live stream. 
Uh, we got a lot of people coming in and out of the live stream all day long. Sorry this took longer than we expected. Uh, one, we changed up a couple things that we wanted to do just because it was the right thing to do. And two, we did have a lot more people that were supposed to be here. And we had a big snowstorm in what Virginia considers a big snowstorm anyway. Right. And uh, a lot of people wasn't able to come, stuff like that. No big deal. But uh, we still turned out a good job. I think it looks really good. Um, it's sitting just as low as we wanted to sit. I think uh, the stance looks pretty good. What do you think, Ken? Yeah, yeah. I mean, boy, you look at boy, yeah. I think it looks really good. I mean, where it's at now, it, everything is where it needs to be. It's just finished welding, which is even more time consuming than what we did today. Yeah. It'll probably take me all week long just to clean up all the lines now, finish welding, all the gaps, grinding it down smooth, getting get it to the right grit. I'm actually going to touch up paint this car, so I need to get to the right, the correct grit even. So uh, all the hard work's done. Now the easy, tedious work is what, what I consider yeah. that time consuming. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Well, what's the man? This is his job. So he had it. We had it, right? Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> okay. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Join uh, the next live stream whenever that ends up here. Yeah, have a good one. Peace. <laughs>